Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a video going over some basic memory forensics concepts using volatility. We will be using some Crydex samples along with the volatility room in TriHackMe to uh, just get a beginner friendly understanding of volatility and some of the things you can do with the tool. So this video is going to, like I said, provide a high level understanding of the process and we will use it as a primer to delve into more advanced memory forensics as we go along. So with that being said, let's join this room. Uh, I don't believe you have to connect to the VPN for this one, but you may have to if you are using the browser-based virtual machine. So as always, let's get into it. So make sure you pull up the volatility room, join the room, and let's get started. So what is volatility? Volatility is a free memory forensics tool developed and maintained by Volatility Labs, regarded as the gold standard in memory forensics and incident response. Volatility is wildly expandable via plug-in system and an invaluable tool for any blue teamer. So let's check it out. Install Volatility on your workstation of choice or use the provided virtual machine. On um, Debian based machine, just apt get install Volatility. I already have it installed on mine. How do we obtain memory captures? There's a few different ways. I recommend FTK Imager. I think it's pretty easy to use, but you can use Redline, dump it, Win32DD, etc. These tools typically output a .raw file, which contains an image of system memory. The raw format is one of the most common memory types you will see in the wild. There is also .vmem files if you're dealing with VMware, bin for Hyper-V, mem for parallels, and .sav for VirtualBox. So if you see those files, you know that they are memory dumps. If you, however, cannot get the memory before the machine goes offline, you can pull the hyperfile.sys file and if the drive, if it is not encrypted, it will have some information in it. So let's go down to the questions. What memory format is the most common? We have seen it is .raw. The Windows system we're looking to perform memory forensics on was turned off by mistake. What file contains a compressed memory image? Hyperfile.sys, otherwise known as the hibernation file. How about if we wanted to perform memory forensics on a VMware-based virtual machine? That is .vmem. So let's get into our, um, I guess, uh, sam memory sample. You can download it right here. I already have it downloaded. It is on my desktop. It is the Crydex mem dump .zip. Uh, I unzipped it in the crydex.vmem. The first step we are going to want to do is determine what profile and volatility we will use. So you can do that once you have, ooh, typing's bad, once you have volatility installed. Volatility, there we go. Just do that, that dash F, that is your file. And we are going to do crydex.vmem and then image info. Let that run. Okay, as you can see, our image info check is now done and it's telling us the suggested profile is either Windows XP Service Pack 2 x86 or Windows XP Service Pack 3 x86. Let's pick Windows XP Service Pack 286 and then run the process list command. So the command for that is going to be, once again, volatility-f and then your file name, crydex.vmem. And then you're going to do um, select the profile, which is going to be equal to winxpsp2 and then x86. And then from there, you can put it in your command, which is going to be ps list, which will list out the running processes. Let that run again. Okay, so here we have a list of all the running processes in memory when we took this dump. And so we see we have our list. We have smss.exe, csrss.exe. The next phase, we wanna take a look at the processes. What is the process ID for the smss.exe process? We can see that right here, it is on the top. It is process ID find the process ID right there, first column, or second column rather, and it is the process ID of 368. In addition to viewing active processes, we can also view active network connections at the time of image creation. Let's do this now with the command volatility f memory file dot raw profile equals the profile and net scan. I'm not gonna run this one because this memory image is a little bit too old. Net scan does not support Windows XP. If we had a more up-to-date memory dump, we could run net scan on it and it would be a lot more useful than it is on Windows XP. It's fairly common for malware to attempt to hide itself and the process associated with it. That being said, we can view intentionally hidden processes via the command PSX view. What process only has one false listed? Let's do that whole thing again and we do PSX view. Well, let's look for one that has one false. 
You want to look for things that only have one false. If everything else is true and one uh, item is false, that makes it look kind of suspicious, and we can further examine that. We see it's true, 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 false. CSRSS.exe is the one that we need to further examine. Processes, however, are not the only area we are concerned with when examining a machine. Using the API hooks command, we can view unexpected patches in the standard system DLLs. If we see an instance where hooking module unknown, that's really bad. This command will take a while to run, however, it will show you all of the extraneous code introduced by the malware. We will have a separate video on this topic in the near future. Let's look at injected code. Injected code can be a huge issue and is highly indicative of very bad things. We can check for this using the command malfind. So let's go ahead and check for that. What I do like about volatility is that you can just have your profile set and just do it one command at a time. That's what the malfind command looks like. Um, we're gonna take this one step further and we're gonna do malfind D and then we're gonna dump it into the temp directory. Let's head on over to the temp directory and let's do ls. And you can see this generated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 dump files. So we can use this later for uh, further analysis, which we will do. Now we can also view the DLLs loaded into memory. So DLLs are shared system libraries utilized in system processes. So we can take the system process of the csrss.exe and list all the DLLs in memory. So let's do the DLL list. This is for the, so let's say this is for the WUAUCLT.exe -U process. These are all the DLLs associated with that process. Let's take on to the next step, step number 10. Now that you've seen all the DLLs running in memory, let's pull them out. Do this with this command here. So we're going to pull them out of the PID for csrss.exe because that is the one that is the infected process that we found in our earlier examination. So let's just do psx list again, ps list, sorry, and let's find csrs.exe and it's 584. So the command we are going to run here is going to be the volatility-f, your memory file, your profile, and then you're going to do PID equals 568, uh, that is selecting the process ID, and then we're gonna do DLL dump, and then the destination is going to be slash temp again. Okay. Um, did I do that wrong? 584, I don't know where I got 568 from. My apologies, we're gonna change that to 584 and that'll dump it into our temp directory. Invalid PID. Did I, oh wait. You need two dashes, make sure you put in two dashes. There you go, so that dumped it all. And now we're gonna go into our temp folder again, the ls, and we can see we have the DLLs now. So that dumped them into our temp folder, so we can use those to do our checks. Now that we've performed some basic forensics, we're gonna go a step further and see what the community has to say about the items we've discovered. So we can check out virus total and hybrid analysis. And these are basically databases where you can check the hash value of files and see if the community has deemed them malicious or not. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you can do MD5 sum in this, in this scenario, and you can just do, let's copy this first one. And you could also just drag this file in from your temp folder, but we're just gonna deal with the hash. So I'm gonna MD5 summit and I'm gonna copy the hash. And I already went in and put in the hash. So you're gonna put in the hash here, paste. Well, actually, let me just show you from the virus total page. This is the home page of virus total. You can go to search. This is if you wanted to drag the file in. If it's a URL, uh, we're gonna paste the hash in here. And as you can see, these are the detections. Um, we can go to relations. Details is a good page. It's at the hash, the SHA-1, uh, the history, things like that. You can also go to relations and you can see it's part of this dump.zip. And these are <laughs> all the detections in the zip. And you can see that it worm windows 32 crydex. And what question does um, TryHackMe want to know? What malware has our sample been infected with? You can find this in the results of virus total and hybrid analysis. It is the Crydex malware, as we can see. So it is a Trojan and a worm. 
and yep, worm crydex. So yeah, that's some basics on how to use volatility and how to use virus total to check hashes. And let's see what the extra card it is. So if you are interested in going further, I will be putting up some videos in memory forensics, but you can check out the Alien Vault Open Thread Exchange, uh, SANS courses, obviously SANS 408, and you can buy the memory forensics with volatility um, or the art of memory forensics. All right, guys, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Let's me know what you guys like, what you don't like, what I should keep doing, what I should stop doing. I've really been enjoying making these videos for you guys. I'm super swamped at work, but hopefully I can keep making maybe like once every couple weeks, make a video, maybe once a week, once every other. We'll see what I can do. Definitely recommend checking out Try Hack Me if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave my socials in the description below. So if you wanna get to know me on another level, I'll leave my Twitch, my Twitter, things like that. Feel free to reach out and I'll talk to you guys at the next video.